Hello friends! In this video, I am going to introduce you to the Revlin bitmap script. I'll show you how to download and install it, walk you through all its features, and share some tips on using it. Also, make sure to check out our Patreon link in the description for even more tutorial videos and useful tricks. Well, let's get started. You can download the latest version of the script for free from the developer's website, colonsender.com. I'll leave the link in the video description. Download the file. Then drag and drop the file into the viewport. Next, open the Customize tab, Customize User Interface, and go to the Toolbars tab. Select the Colon Scripts category. Then you can create a new toolbar. Give it a name. Add the script to it. And place this toolbar anywhere you like. Or you can place the script on the existing toolbar. I've already created a special toolbar for scripts and plugins and put it here. With that, the installation of Relin bitmaps is complete. Close the customized user interface and open the script. Every time you open it, an additional window will appear, allowing you to thank the developer by sending a donation of any amount. If you choose to do so, the developer will send you a license file to your email, and this window will no longer appear. So, all the missing bitmaps are displayed in the right window, if there are any. If there are none, this area will be empty. To restore the path, you need to click Browse and select the folder with assets, or copy the required path and paste it into this box. Press Enter and click Relink. Excellent! All the paths have been restored. In essence, that's all you need to work with this script. However, if you want to learn about all its functions, watch this video to the end. This window allows you to save frequently used paths for quick access. To do this, click on the plus icon. Select the required folder and click Add. To load files from this folder, Choose the path and click Relink. You can also use multiple paths at the same time. I'm selecting another folder to add to quick access. Then I click All and Relink. But in reality, I don't recommend using this feature, and I'll explain why. Let's, for example, intentionally make the path lost again. I'll just rename the folder. Press Refresh to make sure. Often, especially with stack models, textures have standard names like Brick01, Wood01, or simply 1234. In such cases, if the folder above contains files with the same names, Relin bitmaps will restore the paths to them. In the best case, it might be a large surface and you'll notice it quickly in Relink again. But in the worst case, the file names may be overwritten when the project is exported via collect asset, making it very difficult to restore them. Ok, moving on to the options menu. Here you can configure various search scenarios. If you know the file name, but don't know exactly where it is, these options will help you to narrow down the search and find the file more quickly within a large directory. The first checkbox allows the script to automatically search all subfolders. The next option allows you to ignore case differences. If the following checkbox is activated, you don't need to enter the path manually. The search for bitmaps is done in the same folder as the max file. This is very useful and I often use it. The next checkbox allows you to display and override paths for all files, regardless of whether they are missing or not. For example, using this, we can get back the paths for the brick and floor textures we need. The next option allows you to ignore extensions. For instance, if we change the extension of some texture from TIF to JPEG, in order to optimize the scene, we can use this checkbox to allow the script to restore the paths to them. The low memory option slows down the script by limiting the use of CPU and RAM resources. This is necessary when 3 ds Max is fully loaded on a low-spec PC to prevent program crashes. I don't recommend using it unnecessarily. 
It's better to set up an auto backup. Trust me, it's not the only reason why 3ds Max can crash. If you don't know how to set it up, watch the video tutorial in the tooltip. And the last option, activate the search for read-only files. Let's move on to the missing bitmaps window. Let me rename the folder again so that the paths are lost. If you double-click on any texture, the script will highlight the objects in the scene to which material using that texture is applied. If you click Find, the script will load that material and display it in the Material Editor. In my practice, there are often cases where all paths in the working scene have been restored, but two or three unknown textures remain. In such situations, I use this method to check if the object with that texture is still in the scene. Then I load the texture manually or delete it. You can enter the name or part of the name in this window yourself and also find materials related to this texture. Let's move on to the Strip Missing Path tool. It replaces absolute paths with relative ones. And now 3ds Max will automatically find maps, provided they are in the same folder as the Max file. The next tool will create a TXT file for you with a list of missing textures. This can be useful if, for example, your colleague has given you a scene to work on and some bitmaps have been lost. You can send the txt file to your colleague to find the missing bitmaps. The next tool allows you to delete all the missing bitmaps. And the last tool allows you to check the script for updates. There are also cases where relin bitmaps cannot help to restore paths. For example, if you have renamed a texture. I'll now restore all the missing bitmaps again, but the script won't be able to find this particular texture. In such cases, we can restore it manually. To do this, press Shift-T and go to Asset Tracking. Click Refresh. Select the missing texture. Go to File, Browse and select the appropriate file. Excellent, it's done. Check here. Everything is fine. Friends, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Put a like and subscribe to our channel. Join us on Patreon at the link in the description for even more cool tips on working in 3D Smacks. Learning is a little soft school.